All right, guys. Hopefully, I'm in the picture good. But uh, but hopefully uh, the traffic's not too bad and you guys can hear me pretty good. But I'm just gonna go over my mod list for my car. In case you guys don't know his name, his name is Fetty. This is version three. Um, first one was the gray one. Second one was another red one. That one, they were all both uh, rust buckets. This one's from America, completely rust free. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I'll show you on another video. But yeah, I uh, drove down to South Carolina and uh, funny story, my best friend, Aaron Magnolo, he, uh, he used to live here in Canada and just before I moved to Florida, he moved to South Car or he moved to Virginia, but now he lives in South Carolina and uh, <clears throat> this was actually his buddy's car and he did all the work for it and everything. So I, I knew what I was buying before I even saw the car and went down, picked it up. Well, I flew down to South Carolina, checked it out, chilled with my buddy for a while, flew back to Canada, got all the papers right, and then I flew down to South Carolina and I drove the car the whole 15 hours, 15, 16 hours back to Canada. It was really fun. Uh, smoked a couple joints, it was nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love America. Anyways, so, brought the thing back here. I still had the second Miata and uh, I ended up parting that out, got like, $3,200 for it. I only would have gotten like two at the time. It was crazy. Miatas were hella cheap. Yeah, so now we're on Fetty V3 and uh, hopefully I have this thing till the day I die, honestly. Love it. But figuring, let's get into the parts list. I'm going to start off with the, uh, the engine stuff. It's not all perfectly in order at all, so uh, bear with me. Uh, there's a few things that I added on later, like uh, like some sway bar braces and stuff like that that I don't have categorized properly, but I'm just gonna start going through the list and uh, I'll go over prices in another video. I'll save that because uh, this thing's cost me quite a lot of money so far. And uh, yeah, let's see where we're at. All right, for the first thing, I have a Halifab T25 top mount manifold. Um, maybe I'll show you some pictures and videos of it. It's, uh, it's made by a guy here in uh, Guelph, I think, and yeah, it's pretty nice. The only thing is, is the uh, everything was, I had to resurface everything, bolts were all messed up. I don't really recommend the kit, but it's nice. It was the only one with externally waste kitted that I could get that wasn't gonna take like six months to get. Next thing I have is my turbo. It's a GT2560R, it's a Garrett, obviously. Um, and from there, I have three inches straight from the downpipe from the back of the turbo all the way back to the engine to the back of the car so three three inches all around and then uh, externally waste gated so i have the screamer pipe coming out to the uh to the driver's side wheel well and then for the waste gate i have a tail tile mv s 38 millimeter 38 millimeter waste gate and then uh for my blow off I have a, a tail as well. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm probably botching it. But it's a tail QBOV, blow off valve. Then next I have is my Mega Squirt. It's a MS plug and play two. Nothing too special. I wish I would have gone with MS3. So in case you guys are looking to get Mega Squirt, definitely go with MS3. More options, a lot more to do with it. Much nicer. All right, next thing I got on here is the electronic boost controller. That was just a basic one. So super cheap, nothing crazy. Just a flick of a switch, and I, yeah, I can go from a wastegate to a boost controller. And uh, then I have the Dashworks 200 fuel pump. And uh, for injectors, I have the Bosch 850cc injectors. I got these on a great deal, so can't complain about that. And then my tune is by MT Motorsports. These guys are—they uh, only do Miatas, basically. And so that's why I like taking my stuff to them because I know I can trust their work. He, he knows everything about Miatas. Enough said about that. Then I have the Super Miata clutch. I, uh, I went through a few different clutches so far already. So the one I currently have in here is the Super Miata one. Uh, it's still the ACT lightweight flywheel. I think it's only like uh, nine or 10 pounds. And uh, then I used to have an AC, ACT clutch, but I uh, burnt through that one already. That was. It's a good few years old. I liked it. It was a good. It was a good clutch. 
Then I have the six speed Cheney swap and the uh, Torsten LSD swap because this is a 90, so it didn't come with any LSDs or anything. So I had to go and swap everything to the 1.8. Um, I didn't have that posted on here, but it's a 1.8. 1.8 axles and 1.8 drive shaft with the obviously the 1.8 uh, differential. The one I have in there right now is the 3.6, and uh, the one I had before it was a 4.1 or 4.9 or 4.3. Sorry, not 4.9. Then I have my subframe brace weld on tabs. You guys saw that recently, and then the uh, Roadster Sport PPF brace. You guys saw the install video on that. Just, I think that was the last video I uploaded. Then uh, the poly diff mounts, polyurethane, uh, two and a half inch intake piping. That's my whole like custom uh, cooler box, filter box, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, just a generic intercooler, uh, variable throttle position sensor. That was from Flying Miata. Then I have an oil cooler with thermostat and uh, it was a super cheap kit, don't recommend buying it. Then I have the Cobalt Oil Filter Relocation Kit. This thing is awesome, highly recommend it, but make sure if you install it, um, use some thread sealer because it does not hold up very well. Uh, then I just have like a cheap Amazon oil catch can that I probably should check and empty. Then I got a Q-Max coolant reroute, the one from Super Miata. It's, it's a nice kit. Uh, it was a pain in the ass to install and the way they have it filtered into the top rad it kind of sucks so I know the flying Miata came out with a with a new kit that's supposed to be far superior than anything else so I recommend that one if you guys are looking then I have the SPAL 12 inch radiator fan I'm gonna need one more just to help with cooling so just the one for now I'll have to get another one shortly then I have the Innovate motor mounts. Those things are sick. You can lower and raise the engine height in the car. It's pretty badass. Then I have the NA8 ladder brace. That's the one that attaches to the rear subframe and uh, the underbody of the car. Just ties it all together. Then I have the oh my roll bar. My roll bar is the MT Motorsports bar. Same guys that do the tuning on the car. Then uh, I have R Theory hood louvers, the six there. These three are from the Miata, the bottom ones, the top one from the S2K. No one else has this set up except me that I know of. Uh, R Theory end links, pretty badass. Been running these for like five, six, ever since I've owned a Miata, basically. These things are sick. R Theory frame rail, frame rails. They, uh, they're badass too. R Theory makes some great stuff. If you guys don't know who he is, make sure you guys check him out. Then I uh, depowered the steering rack because nobody likes power, well, everybody likes power steering, but not me, I couldn't care less. It's a 2,000 pound car, why do you need power steering? As soon as you start going forward ever so slightly, it, it's pointless. Uh, Yonica aluminum radiator, it does the job. It's not the best thing in the world. Vanny Storm S1s, so these are all my rim and tire setup. Um, they're the 15 by nine to the negative two, 32 offset. Then I have Hankook, right now on there, I have Hankook RS4s. They are 225, 45, 15s. Uh, at the shop I have two 45s, 40, 15s. So those are going on soon, so make sure you guys stick around for that video. Then uh, to make them flush, just because I don't like how the stretch tires looked on the nine inch rims, I had to throw on some 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter spacers but I'm hoping I can take those off as soon as I put on the wider tires. Um, then I have the ARP extended wheel suds. They're self-explanatory, pretty good. Uh, ARP head studs, not in this engine, on my spare short, on my spare long nose 1.6 I have in. Uh, this guy, I have the ARP, ARP exhaust manifold studs. Um, I used to have a short throw sh short shifter from eBay, but obviously I have a 6 speed now, so it's gone. HSD coilovers, they're pretty good, minus the fact that they might come loose on you, so do that with <laughs> as you must. Uh, Hawk HP Plus pads, then I have uh, wheel wood brake prop valve, so I can uh, adjust the uh, 
the ratio of which the brakes work. So fronts can have, small, obviously I said the front's like 60 and the rears are as close to 40 as I can. Uh, I might adjust that some more. I don't like how uh, tail happy it gets when I brake. I have 1.8 brake brackets and 1.8 um, rotors and pads. I think that's all that's required for the 1.8 upgrade. Uh, you don't have to change the, the calipers, it's just bigger brackets and bigger braking pads and bigger rotors, so it's more than enough for this thing. If I have any more troubles, which I haven't at all, I can always upgrade to Willwoods. Then I have stainless steel brake lines. I have two Sparkle Sprint Junior seats. They're blue, but I tried painting them black, in case you guys never noticed that. Um, I gotta do it again or just get new seats. And then I have race quip four point harnesses, uh, both sides. Took my seat belts out. Don't recommend that depending on the state you live in or province because if I get pulled over, this thing's getting impounded because of that. Even though I've been pulled over, never had any issues, but just want to make that clear for some of you guys. Then my splitter, it's custom with the quick release mounts. I uh, need some work to make it easier to quick release. Still got a couple bolts that I got to get rid of so that I can make it super quick release. Then I have the Galvez Custom Diffuser. Thing's cool. I, everybody loves it. Um, it's just a sharp looking diffuser. Not sure if it has any performance into it, but uh, I'm sure it helps something. And then I have the GV Style 1 Lip Kit. So it's the one without the holes. Love it. Everyone has the one with the holes. It's super lame and outdated. Um, energy Short Hub, Energy Quick Release. The 3.0, then I have the Energy Quick Release 1. Then I have my Grip Royal Custom Steering Wheel, which I never really use anymore because it's custom and wood and painted and messes up super easily. So I'm too scared to use it, honestly. It's way too expensive for what it should be. Then I have my Sparkle Suede, suede Steering Wheel, which I absolutely love, and I need to buy another one just because it's got no more suede on it. So absolutely love that wheel. Don't even bother with the Grip Royal. They're wasting money. Go straight for Sparkle, they're sick. Feel great, like, everyone I hand it to, they're like, holy crap, it feels so good. It's like an oval, it's not round, it just feels nice. And then I got some Flying Miata hood props, must have, absolutely amazing buy. Then you got the Durlin door bushings, they're okay, I haven't really paid attention to them that much. ARP carbon fiber mirrors, they're sick, highly recommend them, love them. And I have the R Theory ARP mirror brackets so that I can mount them onto my car without having to worry. And then I got these eBay special uh, Halo headlights. Yeah, they're hard to come across, honestly. Like maybe once, twice a year they get posted up on eBay. So if you ever see them, buy them. You'll never see them again, honestly. This is the second set I own. I still, ever since I bought these, I haven't been able to find another set. They're amazing. I love these headlights. I'd buy, as soon as I find another set, I'll buy them. Honestly, I'm not even joking. It's always good to have a spare of them. Then I have the Pang, Pangos. I don't know how to pronounce his name. The custom tail light conversion. You, some of you guys have seen that. Um, it's getting painted right now, so I don't have it here to show you guys. And then I have the front LED switchback turn signals. The, they're pretty sick. I don't see them on a lot of Miatas, if I'm being honest. And then I have clutch bypass switch, AEM wideband, coolant temp gauges, boost vacuum gauges, oil temp gauges. Then I have my carbon fiber hardtop spoiler, my hardtop obviously, my Project G bikini top which is awesome. I love that thing. If you own a Miata and a roll bar and you don't like keeping the hardtop on in the summer, it's a must. I just take your soft top out and just throw a bikini top back there. You will not ever get it. Then I have the fire extinguisher in there. Fire extinguisher in there. Uh, LED light conversions. I don't think there's anything that has a proper bulb in it anymore, if I'm being quite honest. Uh, rear bumper cut. I need to recut it because it's not straight. Uh, front NB sway, sport sway bars. Rear NB sport sway bars. Inconel stuff, you don't want to go too thick with your uh, with your sway bars because then it messes everything up. That's why I only have the sport sway bars. 
And I have the Inconol studs on all my turbo stuff. And I have the Stage 8 turbo locking nuts. And then my most recent purchase that are going to be here soon is I have the Racing Beat control arm brace and the Racing Beat sway bar brace kit. I already got the rear braced up properly. Now I got to get the front braced up properly. And yeah, that's basically everything on the car. Um, well, there's a lot of small things that I just haven't included, like, I don't know, small stuff. But uh, yeah, it's my baby. It's pushing about 230, 250, somewhere in between there. I haven't dynoed it yet. It's not worth it until I build the engine. Uh, I haven't lost a race yet, if I'm being quite honest. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more.